Rub up your engines! Well, even the Canadians are mad at Toyota now. A Montreal guy started a class action suit against RAV4 hybrids. Turns out they're having a problem with the wiring, and the things are shorting out. They're not warranting them on some BS technicality. There's a high voltage cable that runs the whole length of the vehicle. Corroded, it goes bad. And Toyota says, well, that's not covered under their hybrid warranty. They have an eight year, 160,000 kilometer warranty for the hybrid system. And they say this isn't covered even though it's the wiring that feeds the hybrid system, right? Figure this one out. They say that that part is only covered by a three or 60,000 kilometer warranty, which isn't much. I mean, come on now, it's a hybrid system, it uses high electricity, right? This is the cable that connects it. To me, that's part of the system, but Toyota it isn't. Now they have a class action suit in Montreal going against Toyota saying, you need to fix this stuff. And it's not a cheap fix. You might think, oh, it's only a wire? Well, the person in Montreal had to spend $7,000 to get it all replaced. So it's not a cheap repair. Pair. And Toyota's kind of being swines on this. They say, well, you got this great hybrid warranty. Oh, but it doesn't include the big wiring that's in the hybrid system, the high voltage, right? I mean, to me, that's part of the hybrid system. A regular car doesn't have that stuff on it, only a hybrid, right? It's just technical BS people are trying to get out of. The lawyers have taken over our society. You got a long warranty on a hybrid system. Oh, well, that piece of the hybrid system, well, that's not included. The interesting thing is, as many as 40,000 of these things in Canada have already been repaired because they wiring went bad. They had to repair them under the warranty because it was less than three years and 60,000 kilometers, right? And they know there's a problem. And now they're saying, well, that only includes the low three years, not longer period, even though it's part of the hybrid system. They just realized they had a big problem. They don't want to pay for it. Well, I hope they lose in court and they got to pay for it. That is BS. Total BS. Hey, you know when Canadians, the friendliest people in the world, start doing class action suits, something screwed up. Anthony Germano says, I got an 07 Hyundai Sonata. I replaced the output shaft seal on the transmission. Now when I drive it, it sounds like a squealer. Chains are dragging on the ground when I press the gas pedal. Didn't do that before. Well, I can guarantee you this is what the problem is. You put the shaft off. You got to take the drive shaft, the half shaft off, and then put a new seal and put it back in. That's a very hard thing to do if you're using the old shaft over. The shafts are made and they got those little clips that fit on the end. And when it goes in the transmission, it snaps in place. Usually those are one use jobs. If you pull your axle out and then put it back in, that little ring is deformed. It won't seat right. And what's happening is as you drive, it's rattling around because it's not seated in. It's coming out part way. Be real careful because if you hit a big bump, the whole shaft might pop out of the hole, and then you can't drive anywhere. It'll just spin on that side, and the other side won't move. Realize, if you're going to do the seal, at least by the new pin that goes on the end of the drive shaft, when you buy a newer remanufactured axle that comes with a new pin on it so it snaps in, you'll notice sometimes they're hard to take apart, and you got to really pry on them to pop them out. That's because that little round pin is stuck in the tranny where it's supposed to be and you gotta really jam on it to pull it out. But once you pull it out, a lot of times they're deformed and they never work right again. So you probably have to take it all apart again. Take the shaft out, put a new pin on, put it back together. Ladio says, what brake pads should I use in my truck? I got F-150 03. I tow five to six times a year. I need new brakes and rotors and people tell me that the ceramic brake pads will increase your stopping distance and that I should use semi-metallic for towing. There are various companies that make ceramic brake pads, and they use radically different materials in them. If you use the Akabono brake pads, they do not increase the stopping distance. They're excellent made brake pads. Now, semi-metallic brake pads, they actually can stop somewhat faster because they have metal pieces and there's more friction, right? But they eat up your rotors. Now, if you're not race car Dan and you're driving your truck like a maniac pulling, regular brakes are perfectly fine. The Akabona ceramics would work perfectly fine. You would get a little faster stopping with semi metallics, but it's going to eat up your rotors. The pads wear out faster because there's all that metal, and the next brake job is going to cost you a lot more money, and they will not last as long. Just think about it. Metal is going to wear down your metal rotors faster than ceramics. So, I've seen people switch the semi-metallic from the ceramic or just regular ones. They always wear out faster with the semi-metallic. They will stop a little bit faster, but everything wears out faster too. You got to think about that. Jarve says, I backed my truck up too far in the lake to drop the boat in. The tailgate got wet and it submerged the exhaust system and back wheels. I went to start it, tape wouldn't start. What could have happened? You got that deep. It probably messed with the wiring or relays 
for your fuel pump. Unplug it. Maybe it's all green and corroded. Clean it off with spray cleaner. Put a little dielectric grease snapping on so water won't bother anymore. Check that first. Check to see if it's pumping any fuel. If not, pray that it's just corroded wiring and you can just clean it and put it on and that it didn't actually short the pump out and then you got to replace that. It's relatively expensive. Dargo says, I got my SRS light on but no codes. It's an 04 Honda Pilot with 256,000 miles. The SRS airbag light came on. The scan has no codes. All of normal. No DTC. Could the scan tool be bad or something they can't read? You used an Xtool D8. That's like a $700 scan tool. That should be able to read it. If the light is on, any scan tool should be able to read it. You've got a front plug, theirs in. Now, if theirs reads it, then yours has a flaw. That particular scan tool has a flaw. You never know. It might have been built wrong. It has the wrong software. Maybe update the software to get the latest to see what happens. But if the other scan tool doesn't read it either, then you have a wiring problem. It's got the code, but it's not reading it. And that's either a wiring problem between the computer and the data link connector where you plug it in, or the driver circuit of the computer's gone bad and the light's on because there's a problem, but the computer's got a bad problem in its own circuitry. It won't operate the system and then the light comes on. But since the computer itself is broken for that particular system, the SRS, it may not store the code because it's sort of broken inside. Pray it's just the tool. Take it back, get another one. If another tool reads it, but if not, it's either in the wiring or the main computer. I Primero says, Scotty, what do you think about a used 2005 Porsche Cayenne with 60,000? miles or 30k. I heard they're reliable and can run up 150,000 miles. I drive conservatively. Porsches can be endless money pits, yes. So if you bought one new, maybe it would last a long time. Your problem's going to be you're buying one used. You have no idea how that first 60,000 miles was driven. If it was driven by a lunatic who bought a Porsche because he wants to do burn off to drive like a maniac, it will be all worn out. You would have to take it to a mechanic like me that understands Porsches and has some very fancy equipment to test it out to tell you here's the shape it's in. Yeah, yeah it seems okay or no, it's starting to fall apart. You could never gamble with something like that because you don't know what the original owner drove it like. If you did like you say, buy it new at some outrageous price. It would probably be less 150 if you're a conservative driver. But most people who drive Porsches do not drive conservatively. Nathan says, hope you're doing well. I got an 04 Toyota 4Runner, 4x4 V6, 80,000 miles. The driver's side rear wheel squeaks every revolution. Any thoughts? Jack it up in here and pull on the wheel like this and like this. Could be worn wheel bearing and it'll make a little bit of noise. More often it's just the brake pads. They get worn. The squealer pads, they'll make a little noise when they rub. Could be you need new brake pads. It's often that simple. That all you need is brake pads and they squeak and they rotate. They get to a low point. Squeak, squeak, squeak. I see that all the time. And if you don't like noise, take my advice. Put on Akabono, the Japanese brake pads. They're even better than the original Toyota ones. A-K-E-B-O-N-O, Akabono pads. And they make them for that. You could just put that on. And then the noise will generally stay away for a really long time. They stop really well and they're extremely quiet. Lolly says, I got a 2015 Fit Hybrid CVT training. It struggles to take off sometimes. The engine will rev high and the car doesn't move much. What could be the problem? Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but your CVT transmission's wearing out. That's exactly what it does. It'll rev up and it doesn't catch. Now, the new Hondas seem to have pretty good CVT transmissions. They seem to run quite well. The older ones, and that one's eight years old now, it's probably wearing out. Go to a tranny expert, see what he says, hook up his computer, take you for a road test. But I can just about guarantee you the CVT transmission's starting to go out. They will wear out and slip like that. That's one reason I don't like them. Now, like I say, the newer Hondas, Hondas, I don't see problems in yet. They seem to be much better made. Kind of an early one. Yeah, a lot of them do slip. Jason Starks says, Scott, I got an 05 Chevy Silverado 6 liter. I keep getting PO 300 random misfire. I change plugs, cars, wires. It keeps getting the car. What can I do? I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that probably has a fuel injection problem. The old fives are notorious for it as they age. Misfire means the engines aren't firing correctly. It doesn't mean it's necessarily an ignition problem. It can also be a fuel problem. A lot of times those injectors, they start going bad or the wiring to them goes bad and then you get a misfire. And it'll be random because it'll be moving all over the place. Let's say you have a problem in cylinder number one. Then you get a code for cylinder number one fire, not intermittent. Yours is intermittent meaning it's going all over the place. Since you changed the obvious things, it's probably the fuel injection system. You could try pressure cleaning the fuel injectors. A lot of times it's just flat wear out and you got to replace them all. Have a mechanic analyze it. He could tell you within an hour of driving it, looking at the data from a road test on his fancy scan tool. All that information means a lot to a mechanic. They could explain it all to you. I mean, you can clean the fuel injectors right away. Maybe that'll fix it. 
Try some cleaner yourself, right? But if you want a real analysis, a mechanical drug test, and all the data being memorized on this fancy scan tool, and then reading it back, and you can see, aha, this data's off. Why is this data off? Oh, well, the fuel injectors look, they're pulsing wrong, and then you try to clean them. Or if they're bad enough, you gotta replace them. So if you never wanna miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.